it's not every day that you're lucky enough to interview an amazing inventor, but that's my, my special gift today. This is Bishop Curry, everyone. So, Bishop, how's it going? I'm good. It is a big crowd, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> so, two years ago, when you were 10, you saw something that made you say, I need to stop that. What was it that you saw? Well, on the news, I saw a baby named Fern die in a hot car. So I thought this shouldn't happen to anybody. So I took a pen and paper and I started writing down and drawing a device that I could use to stop it. OK, so tell me a little bit about this device that you sketched out. And I have to tell everyone that you remember we went to dinner you, your dad and you and me, and we went with Marty, your coach. We mm -hmm. sat and we were, we were talking during dinner, and Bishop invented three things during dinner on um, napkins. <laughs> so this is what he does. So tell me about the thing that you drew. How, what is it and how does it work? Oh, basically what mm -hmm. I drew was my first model of Oasis which was um, a full-on car seat, which was then reduced to like a small little box looking thing. Okay, so what does, what does Oasis do? So we've got a car seat right mm -hmm. here. So let's imagine o Oasis is this small thing you said. So what, what does it do? First, it uses its sensor to detect the baby and the temperature in the room. Okay. Well, in the car. And then when it detects the baby, it blows cold air on the baby and when that happens, it alerts parents and authorities. So it actually calls them on their cell phone. Yes. All right, so you know, one thing you said that you noticed your mom every now and then, if you know, your little sister wasn't in the car seat, she might toss her purse back in the car seat. So how did you figure out how to solve that problem? I just figured out how to solve that by um, taking out the weight detector and putting in a sensor. Got it, got it. So um, it's blowing cold air, it's to keep the baby cool. Why did you name it Oasis? Because like, let's say you're in a desert and then you find a cold oasis, which basically gives you a sign of relief. Ah, that sounds great, right? So um, what's the next thing that you're gonna do? I mean, I think there was something you were talking about being worried if Oasis, the battery goes low. So what's, the, what's your next solution for that problem? Well, it's going to have like a little notification on your phone that, hey, Oasis battery's running low. Very cool. Now, does it always have to stay on a car seat? Or you, I think you might even have it in here. You want to pick it up and show people what it looks like? Sure. Yeah. So very small, right? <laughs> and you can attach it pretty much anywhere, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. so, very cool. Okay. So how expensive is this going to be? I'll let you sit back down. Well, the parts cost, like our prototype parts cost over $200, but after we talk to manufacturers and researchers and developers, we can find parts that are cheaper, because honestly, I wanted it to be under $50. Oh, wow. So, so it's just going to take some time, probably, to manufacture several of them. Um, well, tell me a, bit, a little bit. You said you, were, you had a first sketch, so yes. tell me about that process of making it. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we had a car seat that was like our little map of where everything was going to go. And then we tried to make our own plastic with acetone and styrofoam, which turned into a plastic brick <laughs> that melted. Yep. And then I t and then I took a piece of clay and then I modeled how it was first going to look out of you know, clay, but. And then this one, how did you make this prototype? With a 3D printer. A 3D printer, and where did you make that at? Where did you print it at? My house. At your house, very cool. <laughs> so tell me who all helped you through this process? Well, I, who all helped me was like my mom, my dad, Toyota, lawyers. Oh my gosh. And, <laughs> what? In support of friends and teachers. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I heard that you actually, because you were working with Toyota, they actually helped you meet some lawyers to help you work on this because they thought it was a good idea, too. And they sent you to some other states. Where did you travel to? I traveled to Michigan, mm -hmm. and then I traveled to Baltimore. What did you do in Baltimore? 
In Baltimore, I attended PrevCon, mm -hmm. and then I went to a Toyota Center. Very cool. And, and what did you do while you were there? Were you just looking at new ideas? Were you talking to people? Well, at PrevCon, I actually went up on stage, and they were talking about um, existing ideas mm -hmm. and their ideas as well. So it sounds like a lot of people had good support for you. And you also went to a conference, I think, that the Center for Child Injury Prevention Services. Yes. So you were also listening to some other ideas? Yes. So it's like, for sure, they called it C-chips. Uh-huh. And then I was basically listening to how, like, in a car wreck, how, like, child spine reacts to that but it was it wasn't really based on my topic but it was still cool to attend there gave you some new ideas too I bet yes oh yeah okay so let's talk about this do you have a patent for this yes oh my gosh <laughs> he's 12 <laughs> okay. did it cost you a lot to get from the idea to the patent point Yes. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about how much it cost? It costed $20,000. Oh, my gosh. But you had some help with that part, too, right? Yeah. Yes. How did, how did you pay for all of that? Well, one day we were doing a news interview, and a news reporter asked how we were going to pay for all of that. My dad said retirement funds, and then she suggested GoFundMe, which is where people can donate to you. And a whole bunch of families all around the world donated, mainly families who lost babies to hot cars and all that. That's great. Well, so you've gotten quite a bit of attention, which is no surprise mm -hmm. for being an inventor. Mm -hmm. I heard y your hometown had a special declaration, right? They yes. had Bishop Curry Day. Yes. And it seemed like maybe a former president also got a little interested, right? Do you remember who it was that wrote you a letter? President Clinton. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, well, tell us what's next. I mean, you've, you've achieved a lot. You must be exhausted as a 12-year-old. What's, what's next? Well, I'm not really sure because I have an entire book full of inventions. So I'm it's not be one of those. <laughs> well, so you have an entire book, but you probably also have a creative family, too. So you've got a lot on tap. Yeah. Well, Let's tell the audience, what advice would you give them? You know, you are surely not the only person who read something and said, that's got to change. What advice would you give for them? My first word of advice would be, don't let age limit your possibilities, because there's this one kid who was a pilot, and he was like 14. You know, man. So it's like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> My second word of advice is, don't let limited resources limit your dreams. Mm-hmm. My last word of advice would be let um, helping to be your higher, highest priority. That's great. Ladies and gentlemen, Bishop <laughs> Curry.